Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Laura and here I dare to eat different. Today I'm going to be making a recipe that is for grain-free sandwich bread. Some people call it paleo bread. It doesn't have any grain wheat flour in it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 300 degrees and you can prepare your glass loaf pan which I have right here and you're going to want to grease the pan. I use coconut oil and greasing means you spread it around the inside so that your batter will not stick to the pan. And then I pre-cut some wax paper to fit in the very bottom. It will stick in there. And I have that ready. I have all the, the ingredients here and ready to go. You want to mix the wet ingredients together. Wet ingredients include one cup of smooth raw cashew butter. And I have that right here. What I have used is I make my own, and I will have a video detailing how I do that. I'm get that out then. So one cup of nut butter, preferably cashew. Mine is cashews mixed. Let me show you this up close. It's cashews mixed with pumpkin seeds. You could probably use any type of seed or nut, a healthy nut. To your one cup of cashew butter, you want to add egg yolks. Now I have my eggs right here and I'm going to separate them and I've left them at room temperature. You want to keep the white of the egg in a separate pan and put your egg yolk in with your nut butter. That's why I have so many dishes here dog is helping me. <laughs> it takes four eggs. These are eggs that I buy from uh, the Amish, actually. Oh no! There we go. You want to add one tablespoon of honey. This is my honey. It is fresh raw honey from local beekeepers. So one tablespoon. and two and a half teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Put that in with your egg yolk and your cashew butter. And one quarter cup of almond milk. You can choose to make your own almond milk or purchase it. If you don't mind having dairy in your recipe, you can use real milk, real cow's milk, or any type of milk substitute. Now you want to whip your egg whites into stiff peaks. I do this step next so that I don't have to clean my beaters between using them in the egg white and using them with your wet ingredients. To I pre-measured all of my dry ingredients, so I don't need to have that third bowl, but the recipe calls to put all your dry ingredients into a third bowl, which are going to be coconut flour, one quarter cup coconut flour, one teaspoon baking soda, and half a teaspoon of sea salt. The next step is to mix your wet ingredients. Blend until we have it all mixed and there's no lumps from your nut butter. After you've combined your egg white, you've combined your wet ingredients, 
you will add your dry ingredients, which you could pre-measure and put into a bowl and add them all at once. This is, was a quarter cup of your coconut flour and then your salt and soda. And you add those and mix those in. Your batter will get heavier, a little more stiff. The reason that you keep these separated for so long is that you don't want the egg whites to fall once they mix with the vinegar and the baking soda in your in your uh, main recipe. We have that mixed. And then we're going to add the egg whites into the main batter. And mix it until it's well combined using your regular hand held beater or um, an electric mixer like this. Make sure you scrape down the sides several times through your mixing process. And now your batter looks really nice. And you want to put it into your bread, your prepared bread pan. You want to get this in the oven immediately. And that's why you want to preheat so that this batter doesn't have to begin baking right away. Well, you don't want the egg whites to fall. I have had pretty good success with it. And it tastes really delicious. ready to go in the oven. I don't want to tip it. And I'll bring you back to show you the finished product. And I set the oven for 300. 300. And I'm going to bake it for 40 to 50 minutes. While it's baking, do not open the oven and check it. Don't check it before it's been 40 minutes. And then I will bring you back to show you the finished product. Ooh, it smells so good. It smells good. There's my bread. And once your bread is done, you remove it from the oven and you also need to remove it from the pan. I believe it. Um, I can't do it because I'm holding the camera, but you take it out of the baking pan and you leave it sit upright for at least three hours to cool. I've kept it in the refrigerator for up to 10 days, using it for French toast, sandwiches, or just bread and butter. So there you go. Enjoy your bread.